All right, guys, one of the big news stories this week was a sad one, uh, a very, mm. very sad one. We had a young man named Aaron Bushnell uh, self uh in protest of the war in Gaza. Is that what we're calling it? Um, the military conflict in Gaza, the ethnic cleansing in Gaza, the genocide in Gaza, whatever you want to call it. That is what uh, Aaron Bushnell was protesting when he walked into the Israeli embassy uh, and lit himself on fire. Uh, he's a 25-year-old active duty uh, U.S. Air Force member. And it was honestly a crazy story. I know a lot of the discourse around this has been surrounding the self-immolation, but I wanted to prep everyone with the actual details of this guy's life. Uh, he was born into a very, uh, not evangelical Christian, but a very religious Catholic community, a uh, very, very you know conservative right-wing family. He left that community, kind of realized that that wasn't the way to go for him, and ended up joining the Air Force. Uh, in the Air Force, and you know, I'm sure TJ will talk much more about this, but some people, when they get exposed to everything that the military does, it does tend to radicalize them. And that that is kind of what happened with Aaron Bushnell. He ended up, you know, uh, joining some far left activist groups. Uh, and by far left, I mean, you know, normal left, uh, you know, just yeah. so socialist groups and everything, uh, not necessarily like, you know, a far left terrorist organization. Um, but, you know, he got into got to learning about colonialism, all of the you know terrible things that our entire audience all knows about. Um, and became very focused on his help to fight homelessness, to help homeless people. He was sending money to a homeless mother. Um, just he didn't know her. He met her online and just sent money to help with her and her kid. Like that's the kind of person we're talking about here. And he decided that the you know best thing to do to that that he could not be complicit with genocide anymore. And so he decided to self-immolate uh, you know, in, in protest. I don't even know where to take it from there, guys. Uh, but TJ, mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw to you and let you get your thoughts out. I know there's a lot of discourse about this topic, but I, I think it's best to just kind of start with how, how we felt about when we heard this news, because it's obviously a jarring headline to read. It is. It is. And uh, when I first uh, saw this, I mean, I had the same reaction everybody had. It's like, I you're just amazed anyone does something like that. And this has been said many times since it's happened, but the... The thing that makes, I mean, there's a, a dozen different things that make self-immolation uh, and political protest or any protest so powerful is that you, there's no possible way, there's very few ways to demonize that person. You, it, it's difficult to do. Uh, if you're willing, if you believe in something so much that you're not only willing to die for it, that's one thing, but willing to cause the death yourself in one of the most painful ways imaginable, it what are you going to say? Oh, this guy did it because he he's an anti-Semite. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. No one could possibly mm -hmm. accept that. And uh, the other statement was, uh, you know, someone talking about how, you know, the 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 default that the right wing or, you know, not even just the right wing, but people who support the ethnic cleansing in Gaza saying that, oh, well, this guy obviously had mental health problems. And of course, a great reaction that people have been saying is that, oh, so, you know, he was in the military. So him signing up to kill other people for a cause, that's perfectly healthy. Killing himself for a cause, that's mental health, uh, a problem. That's that's it's it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And it's just uh, I've I've often said that if I had any real courage, I'd have been dead a long time ago. And that's a personal thing that I thought, uh, because we all say we're willing to fight for things. We all say that, you know, we we have uh, if, you know, we look at historical events and we always imagine ourselves being on the good on the good guy side, you know, fighting for what's right. And I just think, man, what what can I do to to make things better? Because, yeah, you know, sitting here and talking to a microphone, it's it's easy. You know, it's a uh, you know, it's not easy for everybody. It is for me. And so it's it's pretty simple. But I just wish I had, you know, the courage of my convictions to do something uh, that impactful. And so uh, I'll go ahead, Gage. What do you think? My man? TJ, before no. Ga Gage, before you jump in, that's an yeah. excellent segue to a note that I had. And I just wanted to share something sure. that oh, yeah, go for said um, that that pretty much summed up what you just said. And I thought it was a brilliant quote. And he said, many of us like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery or the Jim Crow South or mm -hmm. apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is you're doing it yeah. right now. And I, I just thought that was such a brilliant quote from Aaron um, and also just thematically tying into exactly what you were saying right there.
Um, but no, any sorry, sorry for interrupting, Gage. I, I want to hear oh, your no thoughts. Problem. And for sure, I just thought and that was just a perfect like, time to say that. Absolutely. No, that's 100%. I, I agree. It's just speaking to the discourse, like TJ said, a lot of people are talking about how, oh, he must have just been mentally unwell to be able to do something so drastic. But it's also the fact that we live in such an insane world mm -hmm. that this one act of insanity, how is this more insane than, say, a genocide in 2024? How is this more insane than what every IDF soldier is doing, what the Israel cabinet is doing? Just the everything happening in Gaza. Have, have you heard <laughs> the, uh, the 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 Sinead O'Connor uh, quote like that? I forget exactly how it is, but it goes something like, yeah. uh, "You know, sanity isn't a sign of being well adjusted in an insane world, or something like that." Yeah, like the, mm -hmm. it, I, yeah, I know what you're talking if, about. If you really think about shit rationally, it it makes a hell of a lot of sense to kill yourself in protest. Uh, <laughs> it, it really does, and and you know, obviously, please, no one in the audience. You will do more yeah. for for the cause alive than dead. Whatever your cause is, you'll do more for it alive than dead. But rationally speaking, damn no, it's fucking insane. It, it, yeah, it it, yeah. it is, is an insane to be sane in the face of insanity. Yeah, just, I'm. I mean, I, I I definitely agree, and I think um, TJ, the point that you were getting to is, I think the most salient here. The thing that I recognize, or the thing that I I guess stands out to me, is that a lot of people responding to self-immolation here are just ghoulish i mean painting yeah. him painting him as like you said mentally ill as a way to sort of disguise or just push away the the negative feelings that it gives them painting him as like i don't know uh anti-semitic anti -Semitic or pro-terrorism or something like that just so you can discard the the symbolism uh of the act that he did and as you say yeah of course you're going to be uh, more useful, I suppose, as a uh, a political interlocutor if you're alive and if you continue to engage, you continue to protest. But um, people that are painting him as as mentally unwell is purely the reason for him doing this. To what end? What does that matter? I think the, the larger critique here is that it's a sign of the times. If you have millions of people in this country, hundreds of millions of people around the world, certainly, that are protesting what's going on, that are disgusted with the actions of the United States. And someone so disgusted, a member of the Air Force, I believe, so disgusted that he's willing to do this so publicly engage in the most, I guess, spectacular, for lack of a better term, act of protest. I think it tells us something about where we are as a society. Um, and I don't think that the individual critique of this guy as an individual matters nearly as much as as the the larger, broader critique of us as a society matters. It's just it blows my mind how people respond to this. True, yeah, true. and just kind of like to jump in real quick and piggyback off that. I think there's another critique that you can have here when you see people's reaction to this. When when you go and you self-immolate, there's a long history. Well, maybe not a long history, but there is a history there of you yeah. do it to protest these wars. Mm -hmm. And it draws massive attention to the cause that you're protesting for to help create some change for the better. And I think when the media comes through, certain media organizations come through and they frame this as solely a mental health issue one person acting as an insane person on his own it does to kind of quell the uproar that people are feeling when they see this they're like wow this guy stood on such business he was so convicted that he was willing to burn himself in front of the israel embassy yeah. if i'm not mistaken yeah. to protest this issue he quite literally gave his life for this in the most flashy way possible just to draw attention to kind of help the people in gaza i'm not saying go self immolate i'm not saying you need to do that to draw attention to these issues i like to think that we try to draw attention to these issues all of us here by speaking out about it like we do but like i said is this any more insane than what's actually going on what's actually being protested yeah and it feels to me like this sort of choose your own adventure story for everybody on the political spectrum, because mm -hmm. when people do something as serious as self-immolate, if it's in favor of their cause, they're perfectly fine with it, obviously. Um, for example, I think there was, um, I don't know how many months ago this was, but there was a, a Russian journalist, I believe, that self-immolated as a way to protest the war in Ukraine that Russia is waging. And the way that Western media covered that was much more sympathetic than how yeah. they're covering mm -hmm what um what Aaron did to himself in front of the Israeli embassy it just it feels like people look at this and they although they recognize or maybe they don't recognize but although it is true that there is a long history of people self-immolating or committing acts onto themselves as a means to protest war right it's happened during the Vietnam War um they, they look at this and they kind of just 
fill in the blanks with their own ideology without actually recognizing that the larger critique here is that someone was driven to the point of doing this to themselves as a means to protest what their own government is doing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't get it. I don't know where yeah. we are. Yeah. It's yeah. actually not even the first, like, this is the second person to self-immolate in, in protest go. of Gaza. The, the only reason the, the first one didn't get as much attention is because they, fortunately on or unfortunately, depending on how you want to view it, survived. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, if I ever self-immolate, just shoot me in the head if I survive. Like, oh, my God, well, that's a well, thing worse than death. Well, John, but... I tell you, who you can count and do that for you, and that is uh, our good old boys in blue. Let's give oh, them yes. a the how, police, how yes. Hey, hey, oh, hey, my how God. Did it, so yeah. did the, the picture to this. <laughs> the picture yeah. of the, the, the second picture that I saw of this event was of Aaron on fire on the ground with a cop pointing his gun at him. Brother, I, what is that going to do? It's, it's just it's you know how uh, they whenever you watch videos of police interacting uh, with the public uh, for, you know, any goddamn reason whatsoever, yeah. they they always start yelling, stop resisting, stop resisting, because they're trained to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. So if they fuck up, oh, well, they were resisting. Like, <laughs> the guy is on fire, and you're yelling, get on the ground, get on the ground. What the To be hell? fair, that's the first part. That's the first part. Stop, drop. Second part, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is just, and then, like, hearing the defenses of this, like, well, you know, he may have had a bomb. Well, okay, what is the gun going to help if the guy <laughs> yeah. has a bomb? Like, why, why are you worried about this shit at all? That is pretty wild. And also, uh, I forget, I think it was Gage who mentioned it, where people talking about uh, whether or not people are going to do this because, oh, yeah, the whole discourse we were having about uh, how, uh, are, are you more effective doing something in an act of protest that that large or could you be more effective in other ways in life, you know, over you know years and decades? Mm -hmm. And people talking about, uh, well, you know, we don't want to draw too much attention to this uh, out of fear of copycats. Folks, I think we're OK on that one. I don't think yeah. there's going to yeah. be a rash of self-immolations around the, the United States, or around the world for any issue whatsoever. I think those numbers are remain fairly low. And. Also, like the symbolism, you know, it's like the whole phrase that you you can kill a man, but you can't kill a symbol. And uh, a lot of people become symbols. And I I thought about John Brown with uh, with this instance and, and John. So Brown. Yeah. 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 John Brown's the first person that came to mind. And uh, because I often think about John Brown, I think, uh, John, you mentioned how. uh you are insane in an insane world if you are sane, you know, mm -hmm. and John Brown is a great example of that. You know, in the United mm -hmm. States in what, 18, I don't know, 58, whenever it was, he would have been con considered. Also, he was kind of insane. He was a religious. No, nut. John yeah. Brown was a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John yeah. Brown was absolutely bonkers. Let, let's be fair. He was a, he was a little bit bonkers, but he was fucking right. And so I see I read about John Brown as a kid. And I saw he had this his plan was to capture uh, Harper's Ferry, which is like a National Guard armory or something, and uh, lead a slave rebellion. There's there no way in hell this plan could have worked. Like, it's just, it's just, it was the dumbest plan I'd ever seen, but he believed in it. And he may not even have known or thought that it was going to be successful. Like he may have thought, yeah, you know, us capturing this armory with a few dozen slaves and uh, isn't actually going to overthrow slavery in the United States of America. We're probably going to die. But he believed in his cause and he was right. And we still remember him, what, 150 years later. So, you know, it's it's just the uh, the imagery can be just as powerful, you know, in one instance as it can be for the rest of your life. And we have plenty of examples of that. People always want to talk about like uh, alternate history uh, timelines where the Confederacy won the Civil War. <laughs> yeah. I want to see an alternate history timeline where John Brown's slave rebellion was successful and <laughs> the slaves took over the country. That That is a much more interesting movie to me. That um, would be great. I, I wanted to pivot the conversation slightly to the topic of self-immolation since we're, we're starting to talk about it and the wider controversy surrounding that because, you know, if, if you're unaware, you know, there's been a lot of discourse, especially online, about, hey, is this an act which sh you know, should be celebrated, condemned, uh, encouraged? Because even if you agree with the, you know, this person's position, this person's protest, uh, do you want other copycats, as, as TJ brought up? And I, I think you know, my answer to this is always, whenever you're discussing this, it, you, it, as much as rationally people aren't going to light themselves on fire, when you're talking about people who are killing themselves, you're often talking about irrational actors. So it's it's always important to always uh, put in front of this conversation, hey, don't kill yourself. If you're thinking of killing yourself, call someone who can help. Uh, because you're always, as I said earlier, you're always going to be 
uh, better use to the cause that you're protesting, or you know, even if this isn't about self-immolation protest, to the people in your life, to the world in general, you are a better, the world will be better because you're part of it, um, no matter who you are. All that being said, self-immolation is such a powerful form of protest is because you have to be so goddamn committed to do it. It is so, so goddamn committed to do it. It is so terrifying, so painful. It is about one of the most painful ways yeah. you can kill yourself, at least painful and flashy. You know, I'm sure yeah. there's some like medication you can yeah. take that is the worst thing in the world. But like, you know, in terms of something that's going to get the headline, get people's attention and cause the most pain to yourself possible, it's hard to beat self-immolation. And that's why it's such an effective me. I mean, I'm going to say it's an effective means of protest. It, it oh, gets course, people's attention. Course, yeah. It becomes a symbol because it's such a crazy thing to do. You can't possibly just be doing this, you know, because you you don't have you need to be fully convinced. Someone being that convinced about anything is something that's worth paying attention to. And to me, everyone who's saying, oh, well, it's crazy that he did this. The, the quote that he had, you know, he said, this is an extreme form of protest. Uh, what, what, what exactly did he say? He said, I'm about to engage in an extreme act of protest, but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of our of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. This is what our ruling class has decided would be normal. And it's like, yeah, we have immolated thousands of, we have burned thousands of children alive. It, in Gaza. That is what happened to Bushnell by his own hand has been done by the hands of the IDF with the approval of our government. And if you're like, oh yeah, this was wrong. He shouldn't have done this. This is crazy. This is what we're doing every day. And so there is absolutely no logically consistent ground to stand on where you're calling Aaron Bushnell yeah. crazy and supporting our current government and, and, and Israel and the IDF. Um, I don't know. I'm sure you'll agree with me, guys. But what what do you think? I, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think, um, as you say, this is the most extreme form of protest you can go with. Uh, anything more extreme would probably just be considered like straight up violence or or some form of terrorism that you can yeah. that you would engage in to try to like dis, um, persuade a government or uh, force them to act in a different way. Right. Like this is probably the most extreme form of protest you can do that isn't directly causing harm to some form of property or some other group mm -hmm. of people. And I think it's, it's reasonable to react with, um, I guess fear would be the right emotion to label or, or concern. I, I'm not sure exactly what emotion it's eliciting, but that's the point, right? Like yes. the point yes. that mm -hmm. Bushnell was, was trying to elicit this sort of trauma response or, or fear in Americans that saw this happen or people that saw it in the news afterwards, um, because it is it is a, a fraction of the pain that we're causing by being complicit in what's happening in Palestine. Um, the, the, the point is to scare people. The point is to to kind of shake you and say, look at what we're doing. Will it be effective? I, I don't know. Um, maybe you can make an argument that previous acts of self-immolation the monk in Vietnam, that's sort of like the, that's what everyone thinks the, of, the yeah. epitome of this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you could argue that that one maybe was more effective because pictures of war were a lot less common. Now we can just look it up and see thousands of pictures of, of Gaza being completely leveled. But regardless, I mean, when you when your government is so resistant to change and so and is refusing to alter their foreign policy, and not be complicit in a genocide, people are going to feel like they have no other option but to do insane things like self-immolate. It is a result of a government being intransigent on foreign policy or really any issue. It's um, it's horrifying, but we shouldn't be surprised that people feel this way. No, yeah, no. And, the action, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, you got it. You got it. No, no. I was going to just uh, add on to that is that uh, we, we have to keep in mind that everything, that all our actions, uh, whether great or small, are just part of the tapestry of the human experience in trying to uh, affect a change. Like, no, there's no there's no great man style of historical analysis going, or, you know, a future analysis going on here that makes any sense. It's all, you know, doing your own part here. And I did have something to say about what John mentioned about how, uh, yeah, you know, don't uh, 
take yourself out uh, and shuffle off this mortal coil on your own accord because yeah. uh, every one of us is going to the world is a better place with everyone in it. I, I did say that that does that does not apply to Mitch McConnell. Uh, I know we we talked about him a little <laughs> earlier. So, uh, so everyone other than Mitch McConnell, you know, take that <laughs> advice. I think you can, we can go from there. But go ahead, Gage. <laughs> Well, I was just thinking to what Jeremy said about like pictures and part of why the protests from the monk in Vietnam during the Vietnam War were so powerful is people didn't really get to see that before. I think what Aaron did kind of echoes that, but almost in like the opposite way because pictures of war are so prevalent because you can just open up Twitter and see children in Gaza be lit on fire, children in Gaza just dying, split in half, whatever. You can see such such brutality just so casually throughout your day-to-day -day yeah. life and walk yeah. away from it. When he does something like this on American soil in DC, it kind of brings it home and it hits a lot of people a lot closer to home than it would otherwise. You know what I mean? Because you're seeing this happen in DC of all places yeah. where our government is. And I think that's part of why everyone feels so kind of like, Ugh, about this whole and, thing. And he's know? a service member too, right? Like he's, yeah, he's he, not just some he, citizen. He, Exactly. He's, in he's, the not Air some, Force. he's not some greasy haired hippie, you know, and everything like this is the guy that, yeah. you know, you've been trained your whole life to respect and look up to. And also uh -huh. the most important part, I think, is the the key difference between what we see in Gaza and what we saw with Bushnell is that we see people who are dead. We didn't see people who were dying and seeing yeah. someone who is dying is a is a lot as visceral as it is to see someone who's dead. Mm -hmm. Seeing someone who is actively dying, you know, right in front of you is horrifying. And, yeah. the, the, it's, and no one's going to forget this for the rest of their lives. All right, so if you're a regular viewer of the show and you regularly make it to the end of the episodes, you know what I'm about to say. This is the part where I tell you to subscribe and like if you haven't already and tell you that we appreciate you for making it this far because it's true. We really do. It helps out the algorithm a bunch. What also helps out the algorithm is having excellent guests like our wonderful guest today, who I won't even tell you who they are. Um, if, if you guys uh, don't know, they can tell you, Jeremy, who the hell are you? What, where can people find you? Uh, I'm Jeremy. This is Gage somewhere on the screen. Ooh, I don't know, somewhere right around here. here. Uh, <laughs> we're from Head in the Office. You can just look us up on any platform, Head in the Office. We're on TikTok. That's our most prominent platform. YouTube, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can find us just about everywhere. We post clips. We post full episodes on various platforms. Uh, Head in the Office, all platforms. It's a great time. I, I highly recommend the show. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate it. We appreciate you guys watching as well. Uh, you've had this great opportunity to watch uh, four incredibly intelligent and articulate and handsome men. Uh, one is a little more, uh, you know, more handsome than the others, I won't say. But uh, check out the Head in the Office podcast. We, 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 really, we really recommend it. And if you're wondering what Head in the Office stands for, it doesn't stand for that, you freaking perv. Stop it. Just go ahead and watch the show. You'll enjoy it, I promise.